Welcome to the fourth midweek service for Lent for this year. I pray that you're having a, a Lent that helps you reflect on Jesus Christ, the cross, his sufferings, and helps to increase your faith in God. I invite you to participate in this devotion as fully as possible. It is interactive. It is designed for you to pause it and use these periods for reflection. Use these times that are given to you to the utmost. They are definitely there for your benefit, for your time of reflection, and hopefully growing in your faith. I invite you to worship with others as you are safely able to do. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, do not leave me to my own understanding. Let me now enter into the holy darkness with Saul, where my assumptions about what makes me right or good or religious can come under your scrutiny. Show me where my vision is at odds with yours. Cause the scales to fall from my eyes that I may emerge from the darkness, strengthened in my witness and utterly dependent on your grace. Conform my mind and will to yours. Amen. Our reading is from Acts, ninth chapter, beginning at the first verse. Meanwhile, Saul was still breathing out murderous threats against the Lord's disciples. He went to the high priest and asked him for letters to the synagogues in Damascus so that he found any there who belonged to the way, whether man or woman, he might take them as prisoners to Jerusalem. As he neared Damascus on his journey, suddenly a light from heaven flashed around him. He fell to the ground and heard a voice say to him, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? Who are you, Lord? Saul asked. I am Jesus whom you are persecuting, he replied. Now get up and go into the city, and you will be told what you must do. The men traveling with Saul stood there speechless. They heard the sound but did not see anyone. Saul got up from the ground, but when he opened his eyes, he could not see anything. So they led him by hand into Damascus. For three days he was blind. He did not eat or drink anything. In Damascus, there was a disciple named Ananias 
the Lord called to him in a vision, Ananias. Yes, Lord, he answered. The Lord told him, go to the house of Judas on Straight Street and ask for a man from Tarsus named Saul, for he is praying. In a vision, he has seen a man named Ananias come and place his hands on him to restore his sight. Lord, Ananias answered, I have heard many reports about this man and all the harm he has done to your holy people in Jerusalem. And he has come here with authority from the chief priest to arrest all who called on your name. The Lord said to Ananias, Go, this man is my chosen instrument to proclaim my name to the Gentiles and their kings and to the people of Israel. I will show him how much he must suffer for my name. This is the word of the Lord. May the peace and love of Christ be with you. Imagine for a moment Ananias, a man of faith, is standing at a door. On the other side of the door is the most feared and violent enemy the church and Ananias had ever known. This enemy had approved of the execution of the faithful Stephen by stoning. He threw followers of Christ in prison on charges of heresy. This zealous and ultra-Orthodox person is out on a mission to prosecute to the fullest extent of the law any and all followers of the way. Now, that person is on the other side of the door, waiting to be brought in and prayed over so that he may be healed. This is what Ananias now faces. If you were in that position that Ananias is in, what would you do? Now here you may take a few moments, pause the video, and think about the question and discuss it as your circumstances allow. Welcome back. I think that given a choice, many people would choose to keep that door shut. Even Ananias showed his concern about helping Saul. But in the vision, the Lord turned him around and indicated the importance of Ananias helping Saul because he would become the Lord's instrument for proclamation. Saul's life was not about to become easier, but instead, as the Lord said in the vision, Saul would suffer for the name of Jesus. We are in a period now where we induce our own suffering so that we may better understand the sufferings of our Lord and Savior, Jesus. Our sufferings do not compare to what Jesus suffered, and we have not been so ruthlessly hunted down and imprisoned like the disciples. Our suffering joins us with those who have suffered in the name of Christ. It is a reminder of the great cost that comes with our salvation and discipleship in Christ. When we are confronted with difficult times, we can use Ananias as an example and pray to the Lord for our resolution. Ananias was faced with a great difficulty and he prayed over Paul. The scales fell from Paul's eyes and his life was forever changed. Let your prayers raise to God so that your lives, too, may be changed by God. May your eyes see the rest of the world, like Saul did, in a new light of those who are waiting to be introduced to Christ. Now may the peace of God keep you in all of your days. Amen.
Your name. 